Europe today is a shining example to the whole world of how to piss in your own drinking water. All over this continent, laws are being passed to stifle free speech and people are being criminalised for speaking their mind. Later this month in Austria, Elizabeth sabadich wolf goes on trial accused of denigrating religious teachings, a charge straight out of the Inquisition. Her crime, pointing out the passage in the Quran that allows a man to beat his wife. For this, she faces the prospect of three years in prison. Welcome to justice, Eurabia style. Meanwhile, I hear that some Dutch politicians are worried about their country's international reputation now the Freedom Party is involved in government. Well, they shouldn't worry. Their country's reputation couldn't be any lower than it is right now, thanks to them. And thanks to a crooked law that allows the country's most popular politician to be dragged into court like a criminal for telling the truth, in front of a panel of clearly biased judges who've since proven incapable of conducting a simple star chamber show trial because they don't have the wisdom or self-discipline to keep their partiality to themselves. At the very moment when the eyes of the world were on Dutch justice, the crooked judges of Amsterdam rose to the occasion and gave such a masterclass in wretched incompetence and bias the trial had to be abandoned. Clearly more concerned with ideology than with justice, they've proven themselves unfit to judge a baby show. One of them even had the nerve to accuse Mr Wilders of undermining the judiciary, but frankly, they don't need his help when they're doing such a fine job themselves of undermining not just the entire Dutch legal system, but the very foundations of Western civilization. The prosecution don't want to proceed. They say there's no charge to answer, but the judges are pushing ahead anyway with a new trial because they're determined to get this guy. You see, impartial justice was never the purpose of this trial or the one in Austria. The purpose is to silence dissent by example, to show everyone else that they too will be treated as a common criminal if they dare to express a negative opinion about the world's most backward, intolerant and violent religion. This is where we are in Europe today. It's like something out of the old Soviet Union. I'm surprised they haven't tried to incarcerate Mr Wilders in a mental hospital. Maybe that's yet to come. To make matters worse, and quite a lot worse too, we have to contend not only with crooked judges and spineless lawmakers, but with lazy and partisan journalists who corrupt the language to suppress the truth and who slander anyone who speaks up for Western values as far right, as a fascist, as a hate monger, a racist, which is what far right means. The truth is that in Europe today, the left is very much the new far right. And this manifests most crudely here in Britain in a motley rabble of anti-democratic cultural self-haters, relativists, pimply-faced students, Islamists, anti-Semites and left-wing fascists who comprise the ironically named Unite Against Fascism organisation whose tactic of choice is to bring violence to peaceful demonstrations they don't agree with and like a bunch of jackbooted Nazi thugs because they're afraid of free speech and they know they're defending the indefensible. Unite against fascism but not religious fascism because that might offend the fascists. <laughs> Perish the thought. But don't worry, you people don't need to be ashamed of yourselves, as if you'd know how, because the rest of us are busy doing it for you with interest. And this kind of thing is happening all over Europe now. Anyone who stages a peaceful demonstration in favour of democracy or Western values can expect to be physically attacked by gangs of these violent, self-righteous dipsticks who owe their own freedom to other people's willingness to defend it, but whose own meagre horizons stretch only as far as the suppression of legitimate dissent. How very progressive. Of course, these people are not really anti-fascist at all, are they? They're anti-freedom, anti-free thought, anti-free speech, anti-free everything except free handouts from the state. You see, leftists and Islamists share a keen sense of entitlement from a society they affect to despise, so they're united in hypocrisy as well as in intolerance, ignorance, stupidity and hate. Multiculturalism in Europe is dead in the water, as every recent election has shown. Even the politicians are admitting it now. Some people cling to the illusion of it still, the way the Soviets clung to the illusion of communism, but it's over. And these show trials and violent street attacks are symptoms of its death throes. They're the desperate acts of desperate people who've totally lost their way. Criminalising opinion is an open admission that lawmakers have lost control and created a situation they can't handle. But that's what happens when the people are never asked for their opinion and when they give it, it's ignored. Well now, it can't be ignored and it won't be ignored. Whatever happens at these two trials, this is just the beginning. 
The genie is out of the bottle in Europe and no multicultural diversity fascist is going to put it back. Already thousands of people are speaking out and making their voices heard in opposition to the relentless Islamization of our society and soon it's going to be millions. People who've had enough of political correctness, of being told what they're allowed to think and say, of being told to respect a religion that respects absolutely nobody. And they're finding out as they do speak out that they're not alone and that they're not in fact fascists and hate mongers and racists at all despite what they're told time and again by a cowardly, crooked press. And like many of those people, I oppose Islam for the simple reason that Islam opposes me and everything I believe in. I don't care how Muslims feel about that. I don't care how anyone feels about it, nor should I be required to. In my opinion, Islam's disgusting treatment of women is a crime against humanity, nothing less. It's a thousand percent wrong. There's no grey area. It's unconscionable and unforgivable, and it's poisoning the whole world. It's not different or relative. It's backward and uncivilized. There's no excuse for it and no excuse for defending it. This is what I believe, very strongly indeed. And you may disagree, and you have a right to do so just as I have a right to say so, and I do insist upon the right to say so as openly, as often, and as loudly as I like, and anyone who chooses to be offended can go ahead and drop dead for all I care, with all due respect, especially over there in the Islamic Republic of Austria. Curbing free speech is like taxing air. Nobody has the right to do it, no matter who they are, or who they think they are, or what fancy badge they're wearing, or what holy book they're holding in their grubby little hand. So they can pass all the laws they like, and they can string them all together in a paper chain if they want to, or fly them like flags from the minaret of every mosque. Those laws will be resisted, and they will be overturned, because they're the laws of cowards and appeasers whose rotten multicultural lie will soon be nothing more than an embarrassing stain on history and the sooner the better if I may say so. Peace. Now there's a thing.